Today's video is long overdue. Reflex is a dependency injection system that has been on my radar for quite some time. And finally, this week I got a chance to explore the API and see just how easy it is to use. It claims to be hundreds of times faster than Zenject in vContainer. And on top of that, it's GC friendly and runs on pretty much every platform, including WebGL and IL2 CPP. Let's break down how it works and why it might be a great way for you to manage dependencies in your Unity games. Installing Reflex is straightforward. From your package manager, we're going to install package from git URL, and I'll just paste in the address from the GitHub readme. You can also install it as a Unity package or using UPM if you like. It takes about 30 or 40 seconds to install, and then we're ready to get started. Reflex uses the concept of containers, isolated scopes that hold and resolve dependencies. And we're going to create a project installer script that will define the bindings for the root global container that's created at startup. We can use reflex.core to give us access to Reflex's main APIs. This will let us define and register services for the container system. Our project installer will implement iInstaller, which Reflex looks for when building the root container. This interface only has one method, install bindings, and that takes in a container builder. The builder, of course, uses the familiar builder programming pattern and has quite a few helpful methods. In this example, we're gonna call add singleton and register a concrete instance of the string hello. Since we've passed in the value without explicitly specifying a type, Reflex will just infer the type based on the value. Now let's put this script to work. Back here in Unity, in my project folder, I'm gonna add a new folder for resources. Inside of here, I'm gonna right click and select Create Reflex Project Scope. This will create a prefab with a project scope component. Reflex uses this prefab to discover and construct the project level container. We're gonna add our project installer component to this prefab so that it contributes its bindings to the root container. Next, Reflex requires a settings asset to know which project scope prefabs to use at startup. You can have more than one prefab if you want to separate your concerns a little bit. So we'll right click and go to create Reflex settings. Then in the inspector, we can assign the project scope prefab to the project scopes list. At this point, we've fully configured Reflex to create the root container when the app starts using the bindings defined in our project installer. So let's put this to work. I'm going to create a new mono behavior called greeter, and I'll move that into its own file. Here, I'll add using reflex attributes. This will give us access to the inject attribute, which is how we mark fields, properties, or methods for attribute-based injection in mono behaviors. So for example, we might want to inject an I enumerable of type string. Reflex supports multi-binding, so this resolves to all registered instances of string in the container. In this case, our project level container already provides hello, and we'll add additional strings later via the scene and runtime scopes. So if we mark this field with the inject attribute, Reflex will populate this field with all matching bindings in registration order. And in our start method, we can have a debug message that will just print the concatenated result. At the moment, we're only injecting one string from the project level. Let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding one more container at the scene level. First, before I forget, let's add that greeter component to a game object in the scene. I'll just put it on the player. Now let's move on to create our scene level container. If we right click in the hierarchy and go down to reflex, we can select scene scope. This game object is gonna tell reflex to create a new container for this scene scoped from the project container. This means the scene container inherits all bindings from the project level container, but can also define its own isolated to this scene. Earlier, we made a project level installer. So now we're going to make an installer that's just for this sample scene. I'll move this into its own file. And just like before, we're going to use the reflex.core namespace and we're going to implement the iInstaller interface. Now we'll implement the interface method install binding and we'll register another string world to the same string contract, but within the scene container. Because the container is hierarchical, it will still inherit hello from the project container and now adds world on top. Back here in Unity, let's add this new script to the same game object that holds our scene scope component. Now at this point, it's probably worth having a test. Now let's hit play and watch the scene load. 
The greeter mono behavior receives its injected strings from both the project and the scene containers. Since we've registered hello in the project container and world in the scene container, reflex combines both into the injected I enumerable of type string, and it preserves the registration order. So the result is exactly what we expect, hello world printed to the console. Let's come out of play mode and take this a little further by creating a boot scene. This will just be a startup scene that'll preload our sample scene and inject some additional runtime bindings. So let's add a script that will handle all of our loading logic. Once I move it into a new file, let's make sure that we're using Reflex Core and Unity Engine Scene Management. This class will be very short. Let's have a start method here. We'll use this boot scene to load our sample scene and provide a reference to the resulting scene object, which we're going to use to inject more bindings before it finishes initializing. We can use the reflex scene manager pre-install scene static method, pass in the scene we're about to load, and a binding callback that lets us add dependencies, like the string beautiful, to that scene's container before it's initialized. So back here in our boot scene, let's add a new game object to hold this new script. We can just call it loader, and I'll add the loader component to this game object. Now when our sample scene is loaded, Reflex constructs the scene container by first inheriting all the bindings from the project container, including the string hello. Then it runs our pre-install scene callback, which adds beautiful to the scene container. And finally, the greed installer runs inside the scene itself and adds the third string world. So by the time the greeter mono behavior is initialized, all three strings have been injected in order, resulting in our log output, hello beautiful world. Now that we've seen how to inject something basic like strings, let's move on to something more interesting, injecting custom types. So let's create a simple interface here to use for our example. We could make a concrete version of iLogger, which we'll just call logger for this example. I want each of my loggers to have an ID for this demo, so I'm just going to use the serializable GUID from the behavior package. This will help us visualize whether we're getting the same instance of the logger or a new one. In our log method, we can just output to the console the ID and any kind of message we want. Now let's look at a few other variations of the add singleton builder method. Remember that add singleton registers a type or instance with the container so that the same object is reused every time it's resolved with that container and any containers that inherit from it. So one way we can do this is we could pass in a pre-constructed logger instance and bind it to the iLogger contract. This means that Reflex will inject this exact object anywhere an iLogger is required. Useful if you've already constructed or customized an instance yourself. We could ask Reflex to construct the logger type itself and bind it as an iLogger. It'll lazily instantiate the logger the first time it's needed and reuse the same one each time. Or we could bind a constructed logger both as logger and as iLogger. This way you could inject either the concrete type or the interface depending on your use case. And finally, another way you could do it is use a factory method to construct the logger. You get access to the container if you want to pull in dependencies manually during construction. It's still a singleton, only one instance will be created and reused. The factory method would give you full control over how the instance is created. Now let's jump over to our greeter script so that we can see some output. We added four different versions of an iLogger in our project installer script. If I had a line here that will inject just one iLogger, it's going to be injected with the last iLogger binding that was registered in the container, just like world was our last string that was registered. Or we could collect all the registered iLogger bindings in registration order. So we could see that pretty easily by initializing a counter to track the index of each logger in the list. Then we can just iterate over every logger in the all loggers collection. Each logger in the sequence can log out its index, and we can go take a look at this in Unity. So let's hit play, and right away we get some output in the log. I'll just stretch this up a little bit. So we can see that this single logger has the same ID as binding number four. It was the last one to be registered with the system. Now, also, while I won't be covering it in this video, Reflex does support disambiguating between multiple bindings of the same type through a pattern called selective resolution. This would give you fine grain control over which binding is injected. There's an explanation and an example in the GitHub README file. Now, let's talk about transient bindings. A transient binding will create a new instance every time the type is resolved. So this is useful when you need non-shared state or you want to avoid side effects from reusing the same object. Just be aware that each resolution incurs a construction cost. 
So if we come over to our greeter script, we could inject logger A and logger B. We've only added one binding to the container, but for each injection, we should get a new instance of our logger. Let's quickly confirm that's true. We can jump right into play mode and we should see that the IDs for these two loggers, even though we've only added one binding, both IDs are different. So that's transient bindings in a nutshell. Just be aware that you can't add an instance as a transient because Reflex must control the construction process to create a new object each time it's resolved. Now there's one other type. Let's take a look at scoped bindings. This creates one instance per container shared within that scope, but isolated from others. Scoped bindings are useful when you need a shared instance confined to a specific boundary, like a single scene or a level or a game session. So now that we've covered how to bind types into different scopes, let's look at how Reflex actually injects these dependencies into your code. So far, we've looked at injecting into fields, but Reflex also supports injection into properties and even methods, as long as they're marked with the inject attribute. This gives you the flexibility over how and when dependencies are assigned, and it even allows for some post-construction initialization logic. You can also resolve a dependency manually at runtime. In our start method, we could use the get scene container method. This is an extension method provided by Reflex. So I'll bring in using reflex.extensions. This way we can retrieve the container associated with the current scene. Then we can chain right into the resolve method, which gives us the latest registered logger and use it just like any injected dependency. Let's go have a sanity check. If we jump right into play mode here, we should see some output from our method injection, as well as our manual resolution at runtime in the start method. Now at the moment, I only have one binding, but we can see that the method injected one output correctly. And we also have our logger that's resolved at runtime. Notice that they both have the same ID. Both loggers share the same ID because they're scoped and resolved from the same scene container. Add scoped ensures a single instance per container. So that wraps up our dive into reflex for Unity. Unlike some other frameworks, Reflex stays lightweight, fast, and flexible. It gives you scoped containers, zero reflection injection, and full support for IL2 CPP and WebGL. If you struggle with understanding dependency inversion, which is the D in solid, or why dependency injection frameworks are useful, I'm going to add some links to other videos in the description. Feel free to discuss in the comments or join us on Discord, and of course hit that subscribe button because we've got a new video every Sunday on an intermediate or advanced Unity game dev topic. I'll throw another one up on the screen, maybe I'll see you there.